What uh, what made you guys decide on Mudbots? They're the only printer out there that can actually print in a time that's faster than having framers do it. Uh, we're, we are a construction company. We do build homes, and we see what framers can do. And it's a matter of days to get a building built and framed up. And that is the time to beat. Time is money. So if I go with another machine, if I go with Buffalo or Cobod, where I'm looking at weeks of print time to get a frame up, I've not sped up things. I'm spending more money on getting a home built. I'm not doing it faster, cheaper, better. Okay. What about assembly? Assembly, it's uh, another time critical issue. I need to be able to put up a machine very quickly. Hours, not days, not weeks, but minutes and seconds count. Because uh, that is going against my time of how long does it take me to build this home. If I can get a machine up in an hour, have it print a home in a day, tear it down in an hour, I've got one day of framing a house up compared to a week of having framers on the project compared to weeks of setting up a, a different brand printer. What about moving your printer when you're done? Got to move it 50 feet, print again. Yeah. What's what's the process here? Uh, you know, we've got the wheel system available to us. We can lift up a corner of the truss work, put the wheels underneath it, roll it across the job site on sheets of plywood if that's going to be uh, a very short distance. If we've got a longer distance, it's just stage trussing. We can take this thing apart very quickly, collapse it into a cart, put it back on a trailer if need be, ship it to where we need to be done next. What size printer do you guys buy? We got the 50 by 75 printer. You building a city? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Gonna try to. Gonna no, try to. Our, uh, our mentality is that you know we know that as you scale up the printer, the parts have to be scaled up. And we don't ever want to have a bottleneck on our printer. And so whether we're printing a flower pot, a tiny home, or stepping up even into something bigger, we don't ever want to go, ah, no, you know, actually the motors aren't big enough for us. We have to stop at a flower pot. Well, with having the largest machine available to us that we can transport and feasibly move, now we've got the biggest of every part and we can go, we don't have these bottlenecks, we're not restricted by the printer on what we want to do, we're restricted by our talent, and that's a correctable aspect. Okay. Uh, what was your deciding factor on the 50? The 50, uh, that's the gantry side of things, and that gets into tearing that down and getting it into a trailer, transporting it. That's really the restriction on that size for us. We don't want to involve semi-trailers. We don't want to have these monstrous things that really make it expensive and prohibitive to move this machine around. We want it to be able to be done by a small crew. So with that gantry being the 50-foot aspect of it, we can get that on top of a trailer in a single unit or just break it into half and have it just two pieces that go into a smaller trailer. Who introduced you to this? Uh, this would have come directly down from uh, my boss on high, Dustin. No, no, no. <laughs> no, who introduced you to concrete printing? Concrete printing? Uh, you know, I've kind of been familiar with the concept for years now. I don't recall who the first company I saw doing it was. Um, but, you know, back when 3D printing first started picking up about 10 years ago, just with the plastic printers, you know, everybody immediately started talking about, oh, where can this go? What's the potential of this? Can it be done with concrete? Can, it be, can we build larger, more expensive tools? Can we build houses with it? Uh, and then a couple of guys started experimenting with it, playing concrete printers. Uh, and at first they were just toys, They're, they weren't effective in it. Uh, and I don't recall when I encountered um, any of the major contenders that are actually having successful prints today, such as Cobot, Mudbots, or Buffalo. Okay. Apis, Icon, Squared. Uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> What are challenges you're facing in construction that even led you to looking for alternative building methods? You know, especially with the pandemic we've had this past year, material shortages are an incredible bottleneck on everything. I can't tell you how many project delays I've had just due to material shortages. And a key one that you know absolutely skyrocketed in price was lumber price. If I can get framing out of the picture to reduce the amount of lumber I'm using, now, I don't, and not that I'm aware of, I don't think I ever had a concrete shortage. I've had labor shortages, and I've had lumber shortages. I've also had miscellaneous metal shortages, but you know, we'll solve that problem later. But if I can reduce the labor, if I can reduce the lumber, those are two huge bottlenecks I can get out of my way.